Hey folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, we are going to learn Ktor. So what's Ktor? So Ktor, as you can see, it's uh, it's basically to create asynchronous client and server application. So you can build anything from microservices to any multi-platform HTTP client app in a simple way. And it's open source, free, and a lot of fun to do. Okay. So the next question might be why someone will use Kato, right? There are various ways of creating, for example, APIs, uh, your server, your client, right? So why Kato? So I think first thing which I would say is that it's built by JetBrains because uh, JetBrains is very popular in the tech community because they have built a lot of IDEs, if you know, like IntelliJ, Android Studio, you know, and uh, Rider. Um, PHP Storm, right? PyCharm, all of these. And also they are the creator of Kotlin language. So I think that those are good enough reasons, right? To use uh, Kato. Second, it's uh, lightweight and it's flexible. So um, that's another thing which, you know, everyone wants. It's probably, you can say it's very much similar to Flask when it comes to uh, use it as a, like a simple application which you can extend using plugins and uh, you can even extend using your own plugin and the third thing is that it's written using kotlin so it's ktor is built uh, using kotlin and coroutines so if you don't know what is coroutines then you'll we will cover it later okay so um yeah you can use all the advantages of using uh, kotlin if you are already familiar with kotlin then it will be fun to use right so without any further ado, let's start. So what you have to do, you have to install IntelliJ IDEA for this. And that is one of the like requirement right now. Oh, okay. Because it will help you basically. It's not like you cannot do K2 development without IntelliJ technically. You can do it, but it would be better if you use IntelliJ IDEA, right? So well, what we will do, we will go to new project. It will be as simple as that. And then you see here we have a lot of options from here. We have Kotlin multi-platform, Ktor, Compose multi-platform and all of those things, right? Even we have Dart, Flutter, Android and all those things. So we will select Ktor. Now you have to here, let's say Ktor and we say tutorial. Okay, the name of the project. Then location, it's uh, under, this is my location. You can change it. Uh, you can check if you want to create a Git repository or not. I would suggest you should definitely check it. And then you have to choose the build system. Either you can use Gradle Kotlin, you can use Groovy or Maven. I would prefer to go with the Kotlin one. And then you select the website or the domain which you want to determine your package name. Uh, right now it's example.com which is fine. Or I can change this for example codeput.dev. So this will be my artifact looks like dev.codeput.kt or tutorial, the name of your application. Then you will give the Ktor version. Right now it's 2.2.1 by default. Engine, you can use Native, which is by default. You can use JT and maybe there will be more. Yeah, there are there is Tomcat, CEO, JT, Netty. We are gonna use Netty itself. And then there is configuration is how you want to configure it. Maybe you can use it a YAML file, hook on file or code. So right now we are using code, but uh, in the future we will definitely, uh, I'll show you how you can use Hocon file. And um, there's a checkbox which says, do you want to add sample code? So because of, um, it's, it's, a, it's a first start. So just because we want to make, keep it simple. So let's add sample code. So just um, click this check mark and then you will click this next button, which is fair enough, create. Now there are a lot of plugins which you can add. So um, these plugins can range from authentication to serialization, uh, compression, all of those things, right? Routing, all of these things are part of plugins when it comes to Ktor. So you can add these plugins. For example, as you can see, I have authentication plugin over here and a lot of authentication, routing plugins, you know, HTTP plugins like compression, caching headers, condition, content um, negotiation uh codes a lot of things are there right so you can use all of these serialization is also there kotlin serialization json jackson websockets all of these are options so for now let's do let's go with routing so i'll search routing and i'll find find this one allow to define a structure route which is important for us so i'll just say add and then you will create the project so we have just added one um routing plugin that's it 
um initially it will take some time to download all the dependencies so if you're doing it for the first time it can take some time so you have to be aware that you know that's gonna take some time so um yeah and just grab some coffee or do something so as you can see my build is successful for now and let's also go through the entire project structure so if i go here you can see we have a source folder a gradle folder so if you have done android app development then you might be familiar with gradle and all the things um for now what you what you can say is that gradle is being used to handle all the dependencies and all right so that's the purpose of gradle and then we have a source folder and uh, external libraries you can ignore these are all which will be downloaded when you will be creating a project for the first time and then okay so let's open this source folder then you will find two folders one is main another is test test is for writing test cases main is where you will write your main code so again it has resources which has logback.xml and then we have kotlin right which is again having the package folder and then the plugins and then application.kt so the focus should be here application.kt because here is where you will have all your code and uh, that's that's how the application starts from right so here are two important things if we go into details of it first is this function main also i would like to expand this import so as you can see we are importing server.application server.engine netty and then plugins okay so there are two important calls here one is embedded server and another is configure routing so embedded server is basically nothing but this is how you will you know configure all your all your server parameters in code and that will run your application so if you remember we have chose the engine as netty so that's what is here over here right uh, then the port which is 8080 host is 0.0.0.0, .0, and module is application module right we will go in details of all of these don't worry but right now the important part is that this is how you start your server uh, run your application basically and then we have a dot start where we say wait is equal to true you can also make it false if you don't want to wait but yeah let's go with true by default and then we have a function which has which is having the name module um, and then what we are doing here we are just saying configure routing okay and this is another function which is here in the plugins part so um it's an extension function obviously and um, it, it has all the routing specific things so if we go here in the plugins we can see routing.kt and inside here you can find this function which is configure routing right so what's happening in configure routing that's like if we see here we have routing and then we have get function okay so um so this is a routing block and routing block contains this get and if you see we, we get this kind of informations here like what is this and all all of those things so get is what get is doing so it's basically this is how you receive get requests so that's why you specify get um, if you don't know about get request post request and all of these things you can refer to my um, like there is a um, cookbook which you can find on codeput.dev where you'll find all this information I'll probably paste the link into the description so you can go and read about networking and all so um, and then so basically the path here is this slash which is like the default path I would say or the, or the, um, the base level path I would say and then we are responding with a plain text so we say call dot respond text and the text is hello world that's it so this is all and everything is being done right like you haven't written even a single line of code because we asked it it asked it to write the sample code right so that's what we are doing so now in the function main here we have this run button we will run it so run application kt it will take some time building the cat law kato tutorial and you can see responding at 000 and 8080 so if we go here and if i'll show you how this works so i have the one second let me just bring that as well here okay one second so what i'll do i'll just keep i'll, I'll just get the hello world from here so you can see hello world right and it is running on 000 and colon 80 so that's good right 
so that means our app is running just fine and now uh, what else we can do so the code is running fine what you can do is basically maybe if you want you can run the test case as well so um, to run the test case what we can do um, we can go to this test folder and we can find application test over here and here um, you can see we have application test class then we have this annotation as test and we have a function test root which has this test application block inside that we just say configure routing as we are saying in our main application as well and then we say client dot get this dot apply and if http status code is okay which is the status then it's fine and uh, the body should also say hello world so this is the expected output if i run this by this then we will see if our test cases are passing yes so you can see test passed one which means everything is working just fine if i change it a little bit for example i remove this exclamation mark from here and if i try to run it now you will see that the test will fail and you can see tests failed so that means this thing is working fine so rather than running it in the browser we can always run the test case and that's how you create your first application using ktor i know this is very simple um this is the basic of things like there are a lot of things which are happening which you might want to know but for that you will have to watch my next video right so if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber already and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one bye bye take care